Good evening. My name is Michel Long. I'm the program manager at the Canadian Hemophilia Society. And I'm happy to have with us uh, Mr. Nurul Islam. Uh, Mr. Nurul Islam is the president of the Hemophilia Society of Bangladesh. And he kindly accepted to join us today for an interview uh, to talk a little bit about the experience we've had together uh, as twins, as part of the World Federation of Hemophilia Twinning Program and also some of the late, latest developments in Bangladesh. So welcome, uh, Nurul. So thank you, Michel. Uh, I am Muhammad Nurul Islam, President of the Society of Bangladesh. <clears throat> I am a father of a hemophilia son and a daughter, and also blessed with a <clears throat> grandfather of Hemophilia One also. Okay. And you've been with the Hemophilia Society for how long? For a very long time, I think, yes? <clears throat> uh, since inception, uh, I, I, I am with the society. I am one of the founder members of the society. And our society starts in uh, 1994. 94, okay. And at, at, the, at that time, I was vice president. And after the death of our president, he was also hemophilic. Then I became the president of the society. And thereafter, I'm holding the charge of president till now. Great, that's wonderful. So the whole, uh, last February, in February 2020, um, as the president of the Hemophilia Society of Bangladesh, you announced some wonderful news that the Bangladesh government allocated funds to divisional level government medical colleges, uh, hospitals, uh, so that they can purchase factor concentrates for the treatment of hemophilia patients. Can you tell me or tell us uh, what the situation was until now, until then, and how this new measure will concretely make a difference in the lives of Bangladeshi people with hemophilia? Actually, this is a fantastic and as well as historic decision by the government. <laughs> you know, in Bangladesh, until now, we only depend on the supply of donated products from World Federation of Hemophilia and to some extent on fresh frozen plasma and fresh blood. Yes, there are some factor concentrates available in our commercial market but those are very expensive and out of reach of our patient. In last few years, we are receiving a good amount of humanitarian aids from World Federation of Hemophilia, and we distribute them through hemophilia treatment centers and from our office as per prescriptions. Still, we are facing difficulties when we need big amount of factors for some particular patients, with life-saving bleeding or emergency surgery. You know, they need big amount of factors, which sometimes difficult for us to arrange. It's true that the amount of humanitarian aids we receive from World Federation of Hemophilia is not sufficient at all to meet total minimum needs of our patients. I mean patients who are registered with Hemophilia Society of Bangladesh. You know, there are so many unidentified and unregistered patients. What we were able to convince our health authorities by making them understand the needs of our patients on the basis of minimum needs of our registered members. What we are now doing is to identify as many patients as possible so that we can put a figure to the health authorities and allocate more funds from next year. Although government is only allocated a small amount of funds against our minimum demand. This allocation to the divisional level hospitals for purchasing factor concentrates will give our patients a sense of security of life and their mental strength will grow. When available in hospitals, patients admitted in hospital with emergency problem 
will be treated properly and efficiently. Doctors will also be happy to provide necessary treatment with factor concentrates free of cost and deal with the patients confidently. Yes, our patients around the country are very happy indeed. Yes, this is a dream comes true after a long time from 1994. That's a great achievement. Congratulations, Noel. Um, many organization patients around the world, NMOs like yours, um, have been working hard to achieve similar results. So I'm wondering if you can describe uh, what specific actions HSB undertook uh, to convince the government to make treatments available throughout the country. And over what period of time have you been working on this? And, and who are the main players uh, that contributed to this success? Yes, I will take a bit time for these questions because you know, this is very uh, important questions. Well, we have been working to make treatment available throughout the country since the establishment of Hemophilia, Hemophilia Society of Bangladesh in 1994. We have always tried our best to bring our government attention to the suffering of hemophilia patients in Bangladesh. We have arranged several seminars, symposiums, and rallies around the country and invited health officials in those programs. We have even arranged international hemophilia workshop where our director general of health services was present and understood the necessities of treatment of hemophilia patients. We have met with our health minister in his office with an application accompanied by senior hematologists of the country, but we could not get results at that time. But we never disappointed and continued our advocacy work. We have even met with Director General Health Services by World Federation of Hemophilia officials several times, but did not work as well. And then we have had the opportunity to work with Canadian Hemophilia Society as a hot training partner for a period of four years from 2014 to 2017, where we have learned how to work properly to convince our government. We have set a concrete action plan aiming what the particular needs we have and how we achieve them. Accordingly, we have identified the key stakeholders, brought them together in a meeting in April 2015 and prioritized our needs. We did receive concrete suggestions from them, therefore, identify focus area. We have joined hand with the Hematology Society of Bangladesh and written a joint letter and met with Director General of Health Services. We have had able to arrange a meeting with the authorities where high officials from both the societies were present. The hematologist and we were able to make health officials understand the minimum needs of our patients, and we got good response from them. Yes, in the letter, we have clearly mentioned our particular needs that are where and how much factor concentrates we need on the basis of registered patients with HSB. We mentioned our points like include hemophilia in government health policy, and accordingly start awareness programs through government channels. And yes, it works brilliantly, and government agreed to allocate funds for purchasing factor concentrates in divisional level hospitals. It requires about five years to achieve this goal. Well, different stakeholders were behind the scene, and we should, I should mention them. The continuous advocacy work of Hemophilia Society of Bangladesh officials, especially its president, Hematology Society of Bangladesh, especially its general secretary, senior hematologist, 
influential officials of health services and the good humanitarian sense of our director general health services previous meeting with our ex health minister has also made a contribution this is the reality mm -hmm. so no you mentioned that uh, we have been twinning for the past six years or so um, both uh, first as hemophilia organizations and we also did a special youth twinning which was a pilot project initiative of the world federation um, you may know that many people in canada uh, are supportive of the twinning initiative but many people wonder you know what what purpose can it serve and there may be people also considering twinning uh, that wonder about the value of twinning. So I'm wondering if you can talk to us more specifically um, about the work we did together to solidify your government practices, establish chapters across the nation, and to develop the leadership of the members, particularly the youth members. So in what ways did these activities perhaps uh, contribute to the success that you have had? Because earlier you mentioned we coached you in, in terms of how to best approach government but were there some of the other activities also helpful in achieving your goal yes twinning with canadian hemophilia society has made a big role in this success let me explain how twinning helped us we have had organization training with Canadian Hemophilia Society from 2014 to 2017 and youth twinning from 2018 to 2019. Our twinning program had begun with a successful World Federation of Hemophilia and Canadian Hemophilia Society assessment visit in 2013. In four year twinnings with Canadian Hemophilia Society, we have learned many things from Canadian which actually reshaped the activities of Hemophilia Society of Bangladesh. From volunteers training to establishment of chapters, from strategic plan to advocacy work, from awareness to leadership development, from good governance to establishment of youth group, from volunteer committee to fundraising committee, the many working areas to explain. We have created a strategic plan under direct involvement of Canadian Hemophilia Society representative and World Federation of Hemophilia officials and almost all relevant stakeholders in Bangladesh. We have arranged further strategic workshop to create a time-bound action plan with six key work advocacy, education, etc. The training of volunteers directly conducted by the Canadian Hemophilia Society's volunteers helped us a lot to learn leadership skills, volunteer work, fundraising, advocacy, and many areas to explain. Participation of HSB president in Canadian Hemophilia Society's annual conference and presentation of survey exercise there and World Federation of Hemophilia headquarters busy and the sharing experience of three years strategic plan brings recognition of World Federation of Hemophilia. Therefore, 2015 Twins of the Year awarded to Bangladesh and Canada. Through several awareness programs, we are able to make a sense of need of hemophilia care all over the country. We were able to create good volunteers base and excellent group of youth volunteers whom actually became the main field level workforce. Our volunteers, especially Hemophilia Society of Bangladesh staff officials, were able to get important training of advocacy work, which was one of the best skills learned from our friends, Canadian. We arranged education and awareness program throughout the country in collaboration with medical institutions and the medical college hospitals. In two years of youth training, our youth volunteers were able to learn the leadership 
skills which made them very strong youth leaders and ultimately helped HSB to achieve its objectives. In last six years of twinning, the skills we learned actually helped us achieve this big result. The time-bound action plan which stipulated the work must be followed time to time and evaluate as required. And we did that efficiently. We are able to include all the stakeholders in our demand to be placed before the government and never got disappointed as learned from our friend, a twinning friend of Canadian Home Society. We did agree till the end and evaluate the work, our work. We did found our, our work false and corrected time to time. That actually worked well for us. Yes, our twinning with Canada, Canadian Home Affairs Society is one of the main reasons be, behind our success, and we are always grateful to them. That's great, wonderful. So if I was to summarize, I guess I, we could say that it's the capacity building on different levels all combined together, being knowledge or skills that really came together and helped HSB to be doing this work in a more efficient manner, perhaps. So that's, that's uh, I think- Yes, be... yes, I agree. Yeah. So tell me then- Yes, I agree. Yeah, so what advice would you give to other NMOs that are trying to achieve the same results? Because many NMOs around the world are working towards the same goal. So what would be your advice? And uh, particularly, what would be your advice for those who are currently engaged in twinning? Uh, I will explain it uh, in this way, that actually it was not easy to convince our government to come forward to support the hemophilia patients with the funds for purchasing factor concentrates. The emerging animals need to be determined at their work to convince the government. They first need to determine their particular needs, which we did through need assessment survey throughout the country in Bangladesh. This is very important. Then they need to create a time-bound action plan and identifying key working persons and take support from relevant stakeholders. They must focus their demand to the health authorities, especially health minister and bureaucrats. They can learn necessary techniques and modalities how they approach health officials from their established training. They can learn also advocacy approaches and create working volunteers in this process. So everybody should work properly and there should be uh, an, uh, backbiting because say for example, when you work with Canadian Hemophilia Society, always uh, in our man, mind, yes, uh, we'll be ashamed if we can't uh, do the target. So if is there any uh, problem or fault that can be corrected and we should proceed further. That is the way. So we should, uh, 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 we should not be disappointed. Uh, we should go forward. That is the way to do work. Okay. Great. Tell me, Norod, we're in the middle right now of a COVID-19 pandemic, uh, as you well know. And I'm just wondering, um, in Bangladesh, it's our understanding that uh, your members have not been able to uh, reap the benefits of the new agreement with the government because of the pandemic and some of the limitations that have been imposed on you, maybe because of uh, social isolation and so forth, all the other measures. Uh, can you explain specifically how the pandemic has halted the distribution of factor companies and uh, what can be done when there is an emergency situation with the bleed um, currently? Due to COVID-19 pandemic, the whole country is somehow in lockdown situation. And priority of the government is to prevent COVID-19 and engaged its full energy on that work. You know, we are third world country. 
our doctors there are in government sector very less doctors and hospitals facilities is very less that's why um, though funds have already been transferred to the concerned hospital facilities but all those hospitals are now fully engaged with covid 19 identification and treatment work presently even treatment of normal patients is getting hampered on the other hand all the government and private officials other than the emergency services are closed due to nationwide lockdown so normal communication is also fully halted we all are in fact in the home so we advised our patients not to visit hospital except life threatening emergency mm -hmm. that is the way and we tell them Please, please use rice and others, which is available near your home. Okay. I understand too that you said earlier that you were receiving uh, from the World Federation some products thanks to their humanitarian um, aid program. Although it's never enough, uh, you were getting a little bit. But again, the World Federation has been experiencing challenges right now in shipping uh, donated products to its member organizations because of COVID-19. Um, so what have been the consequences for you in Bangladesh of this uh, uh, delay in receiving products from the World Federation and what mitigating measures have you put into place in the interim? Because I know you would receive these products at HSB and HSB could then uh, treat some of your members. So what, what is the situation now that uh, some of these shipments are being stalled? Yeah, it seems that the concerned hospitals may not be available to purchase factor concentrates during the COVID-19 pandemic. We have taken a cautious approach to using factor concentrates, which we received from WFS as human aids. WFAs has also advised us to cautious on probable problem in shipping of humanitarian aid due to lockdown situation worldwide and storage of shortage of air cargo. We have already transferred some portions of humanitarian aids to the hemophilia treatment centers and keep some portion with us for distribution among patients for home infection and emergency purpose with doctor's prescription just before uh, the uh, COVID-19. Luckily, we get a, a, a get an allotment before this uh, COVID-19. So it is helpful for us. We have already advised not to go for any surgery or prophylaxis. We especially advised our members not to visit hemophilia treatment center in this time of lockdown, except for very emergency situations. You know, our hemophilia treatment centers are not giving any factor concentrates for home infection. Yes, it's very tough to keep our patients safe with limited use of factors, but we hardly have any other options. Availability of plasma will also be limited due to Ramadan as well. However, our aim is to keep safe our patients from coronavirus. Mm -hmm. Yes. It's a big priority, I'm sure. Noor, I want to thank you for this interview. And I also want to wish everybody in Bangladesh and the Hemophilia Society um, all the best in terms of staying safe and taking care. And hopefully we'll be out of this pandemic soon and you'll be able to get the treatment for people at the right time and the right place to limit you know, suffering and, and maybe even death. So. Uh, our hearts are with you, and it's been a pleasure working with you of all these years, and we are looking forward to our continued working relationship, Noor. So th thank you very much, and please convey our best wishes to all your members. Thank you very much to you, and as well as our friends of Canadian Hemophilia Society, and all the members of your organization. Please convey my best wishes from Hemophilia Society of Bangladesh. Thank you very much.